Today's video was sponsored by Pop Culture Zone Pressing Services. If you need your comic books pressed, I personally vouch for Pop Culture Zone as being one of the best professional companies in the game, offering hands down the lowest prices out there. Services start at only $9.99, and every order place will receive free fast track turnaround times. Even though I press comics for my personal collection, whenever I need a professional press for my key comics, I send them off to Pop Culture Zone and every single book that I've received back, every single one has had results that have exceeded my expectations and I am sure that they will exceed your expectations as well. Make sure you go check the link in the description below to head over to their website, popculturezone.com for complete details on services and how to begin your order. All right, guys, I got a video with some tips here for you guys today. If this is the first time you guys are checking out my channel, please take a moment, subscribe, and leave some comments after you watch the video. I produce content about six days every week, so lots of fun stuff, you know, week after week. I talk comics, comic tips, comic collecting, market, uh, the financial aspect of, of collecting, and and pop culture and movies and whatever you think of, whatever you could think of relating to the hobby. But today um, I'm answering some questions that I received from community members about basically, you know, tips on how to store and, and protect our comic books. So uh, let's go into these questions here. And the first question is, can cardboard boxes be stacked? Would you recommend the black plastic boxes. Okay. My answer to the first part of that question is absolutely yes. Uh, boxes can be stacked um, in a couple ways. Okay. First off, and I have a, a, a lid right here. If you have a box, all right, if you have a short box and you have the lid on it, okay, you can easily set another short box right on top without it doing any damage to uh, to the comic books or the comic book box, really. These boxes, I mean, they're cardboard, but they are sturdy. Now, you have different brands. Um, like, this is a Comic Defense. I don't know if you guys can see that from here, but there's a little label right here. This is Comic Defense, right? Then you got, uh, let's see, which one is a BCW? This is a BCW brand. I highly recommend the BCW brand. They're actually a little bit longer than some of the other brands. They're longer than the Comic Defense, uh, so they could fit a little bit more comic books, but they're still a short box, so it's a good size. Uh, and they're really, really durable. BCW, I love BCW all day, every day. And all that's that's all their products, really. I, I stand behind BCW for sure. Now, um, with that being said, you could stack, you know, I've stacked uh, probably three uh, boxes at most on top of each other. Obviously, I, I, mean, I have a situation now where I don't need to stack, but uh, we'll get into that in in, uh, in a little bit. Second part of this question, would you recommend the plastic black boxes? So for those that don't know, there are the, the uh, sturdy, uh, strong plastic boxes that are about three to four times the price of the cardboard ones. So you're looking at about, for a short box, cardboard box, BCW, you're looking at about $5 on average. Sometimes maybe you can find them for a little cheaper than five, sometimes maybe a little more than five. But if you go to a LCS, you're gonna find a short box for around $5, okay? You're going to find those plastic black uh, boxes from anywhere from 20 to even $30. So, you know, that's, that's four plus times uh, the, the cost. I think I said three originally, but think about it. That, that That's four. Five times four is 20. Um, it's a lot more costly. So my thing with answering these questions is always about budget. Hey, if you have extra cash to spend, go ahead. Go ahead and, and, and buy them, uh, the plastic ones, if that's what you like. But you have to understand why you like them. Uh, and that kind of leads us into this uh, second part of this question, or excuse me, um, is a, a, a separate question, but it pertains to what I'm saying here, and that is, uh, d does sunlight or UV rays penetrate through cardboard comic boxes? The answer to that is no, they do not. So uh, your comics are completely protected in this. So that goes back to the first question. Should I buy the black plastic ones and spend four times more? 
don't do it if you think that you're getting better protection for your comics because you're not. Um, I, 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 I'm going to say that I, I stand by cardboard boxes all day, every day. I don't, ne I don't really see myself ever spending four or five times the amount on a plastic box unless I became a millionaire. I mean, I just, I really don't see it. I, I, I love the cardboard boxes for what they are. Um, now keep in mind, I've never had the, uh, experience of having a plastic one in my collection to where I might start getting fond of it. But yeah, ultimately they're not going to protect your comics any different as long as they're sitting in a room, uh, when it comes to UV lights or sunlight, um, it, it is not, uh, UV lights do not penetrate through the cardboard. Now you do have the handle hole right here. Okay. So, you know, if you have, um, a, a huge window, say, I had a huge window right over here and I have my book sitting right here and it's hitting that light every day. You want to be careful of that. But the way that you can stop that from happening is you could put a piece of cardboard in the front of your box inside or a couple of backing boards and that cardboard will indeed block out the exposure from the handle piece. So, uh, so yeah, so don't worry about UV rays. Uh, in cardboard boxes, any boxes uh, for that matter. I mean, the plastic boxes will also uh, protect them from UV rays. What I do, uh, uh, what, what, what I will uh, bring something up towards is a lot of people keep their combo books in plastic tubs that you can get at you know, Walmart or Targets. And those plastic tubs are usually clear. Those will not stop UV rays in sunlight from damaging your book. So that's that's one thing to keep in mind. If you do keep them in those tubs, you probably wanna make sure that they are in a uh, cool, uh, dark closet or just in a room that is completely blacked out, blackout curtains uh, and, and everything. And you don't want the exposure of lighting even to, uh, to be on them uh, for a long period of time. So hope that answers that question there. Uh, next question. What works better, short box or long boxes? All right, guys, if you guys can see this here, my unit that I have here is set up for long boxes. Each cubby fits a long box. And it works perfectly in the setup because it allowed the, the desk to be the proper size for me to have a tabletop that I use as a desk and to house my comics and to set a little uh, bookshelf on top, right? Um, it works perfectly when I bring them out, it's a little tough. And what I usually have to do is I have a stool that I'll set like right here and I can bring it out because once you bring it out like this, it starts to dip and it'll fall and it's hard to hold it and, you know, look through the books, pull one out. So I set this side on the stool. That way it can sit here and I have both hands to go through my comics and pull them out and whatnot. So now the bigger answer to this question is I do prefer short box than long boxes. Some years back, probably like six years ago, I said, you know what? I'm, I'm going to switch everything to long box. Why not? Right? Um, they fit more books. I, I, I ended up outside of everything that's in this unit right here. I ended up putting everything back in small boxes. If you don't have a proper storage setting for long boxes, I can't stand them. And I recommend probably still going with short boxes. The thing with short boxes is, they take less room, um, you know, width wise in a, in a room space wise. Um, and, but with short boxes, you can stack easier too. So as you can see on these shelves here, what, what used to be in long boxes and that would come out twice as far. So I didn't have enough uh, walking space. Now I can stack higher. And also they're easier to get into. They're easier to pull off the shelf and look into. Uh, they're easier to pull off completely and like set on a floor. And for those that are constantly moving, it's easier to lift physically. Um, there was a point in time where I was lifting a lot of long boxes and it was really hard on my back. So for those that have back issues or those that may be kind of older, um, you know, lifting those and moving those long boxes could be uh, really tough. I definitely recommend short boxes unless, like I said, you have a real feasible uh, storage setup that could really work with long boxes. So that's just uh, my opinion on that. All right, next question. Is there a system for keeping books from sliding down or bending 
when the box is full. So uh, that pertains to, again, uh, let's see, uh, which one should I use here? Because I do have a system, and it's a fun system. Let me pull this box out, guys. I'm going to show you guys here. Okay. This box, we can see here, um, is not full. You see that? So see when I do this? They, they slide. Look, if you guys can see. Look, they slide, right? So what's my system? Well, for this box, I have a Star Wars toy that fits perfectly in there so the slide, so they don't bend and they slide right onto it. Now, that might not be that practical, but look, I'm all about getting creative. If you can get creative and find something that, that works, hey, do it. But let me show you guys something else that I use, okay? And I showed this off in a video before. Now, I know these aren't as wide as a comic book box. Um, they're too wide this way, and they're not as wide this way, but they still work. So if I was to take this um, toy out and put this in, that's this much thick, it's about a good thickness to stop these books from going over. So to show you guys, you see that? About the perfect thickness. Now, you got to keep in mind how much space is in each box. Uh, I saw a uh, fellow YouTuber, Silver Age Dave, use these perfectly cut uh, styrofoam cutouts. And if you guys can find styrofoam that might even be uh, too large and then cut down the size to fit perfectly into a comic book box, I highly recommend using uh, styrofoam. Styrofoam, uh, it's just, it, it's almost the perfect material for something like this to keep your books from sliding um, in and out. Now, if you do have a, um, I thought I had one laying around here, but if you do have a magazine box or a, a CGC uh, slab box, you can actually fit, yeah, and I, I, I used to, but I, I must have pulled it out. You can actually fit a uh, another priority mailer. And you guys, I've said this before, you guys can get these free from USPS, okay? Priority mail boxes. You can go online to usps.com and you can order some. There is the regional A flat rate box um, and it fits perfectly. It fits perfectly when you fold it up, tape it up into a magazine size box. So if you have extra space in that size box, I recommend using those. Um, I'm telling you guys, I use all kinds of, I, I, I get creative. Like, look, I have um, another thing that works good pop boxes. If you have pops on displays out of their boxes and uh, you just have pop boxes laying around, stick it right in there. I have. You could even use two if you want it to stay the height of the, of the comic books and they fit right in there perfectly. So uh, that's my uh, advice. You know, even if, uh, you know, say you have a box that's full, right? This box is pretty full, but say I'm organizing or rebagging and boarding and I want to grab uh, a bunch out. That's another tip too. Don't grab a bunch at once because they can slip and bend and you can hurt the spine and whatnot. Grab a few at once and then a few more. But even if you're just taking books out temporarily and you have something like, uh, like a box that you could slide in there or, hey, look, even a book, even an Overstreet Price Guide will fit perfect right in a box just like that, right? So you 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 can easily get creative. But like I said, if you could find some solid um, styrofoam and cut it down to size, awesome, awesome. Those would work great. All right, what is the next question here? Uh, should books be stored stacked on top of each other? Ooh, okay. Uh, <laughs> funny, funny thing. I currently have books stacked on top of each other. For, for you guys that watch my videos, you probably will see at least a small amount of books stacked on top of each other always. And it's just my process. It's because when I get books in, I have a process of, okay, these, these got to sit over here to be uh, uh, pressed. These got to sit over here to be rebagged and boarded or cleaned or whatever, right? But the, the easy answer to that is no. Don't lay books down stacked. Do not do it. If you do do it, well, before I get into if you do do it, but don't do it. And the reason why is this. 
And a lot of people in the industry will tell you guys about this. And I'll just repeat what a lot of people have said. When you have a book that sits flat, okay, it's not flat because there's a spine. There's staples. There's a spine over here. Obviously, the spine is uh, thicker than the rest of the book, okay? So when you sit books flat on top of each other with weight on the spine side, it can cause stress and damage to the book, okay? You you could see it if, uh, if there's been, especially books that, are, that have no bag and board on them. If they've been sitting like that for months or even years at a time, you'll the book will you'll see a roll you will see a roll in the book from doing that now if you absolutely have to um stick books uh you know stacked on top of each other and i just pulled these out yesterday do this with them take half with the spine on the left side and half with the spine on the right and stack them like that okay so half of these books are facing this way half of them are facing that way that way, the weight is evenly distributed, okay? That's my advice there, but if you ever have them stacked up, you want to get to them as soon as you can to get them bagged and boarded and put in a box, okay? You really don't want to leave them sitting around at all. I've gotten better with that myself, but like I said, I still go through a process and, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. I think we all try to do our best, right? All right, I think we got... One more question for this video, guys, and that is, I live in a warm environment. How do I mitigate heat and humidity? Wow, such a great question, and I got some things right here for us today. Okay, I've said this a lot in videos. The biggest thing about protecting your comic collection is storage, okay? We talked about all different kinds of storage things today. We've talked about boxes. We've talked about keeping them in boxes where they don't fall over and crinkle on each other and bend and create spine warp. Uh, you know, we, we talked about not setting them up, but the biggest issue when it comes to storage is climate. It is the environmental impact on those books. Okay. And sometimes that's out of our control. I live in an area where we have extreme heat in the summers. Winters can get kind of cold, um, but our, our summers are just hot, sometimes dry, sometimes humid, and it, it, it's tough. And I uh, have this room, which was built in our garage, that is insulated, but it doesn't have central heating or cooling. So it's tough for me. It's summertime right now. I'm battling it. I do have a plug-in LG unit uh, that I run. I also have a basic uh, fan, plug-in fan, and I have a ceiling fan as well to keep flow circulating. Um, but that's not enough. So let me tell you guys some tips. Even if you are in a climate where you know you have decent temperatures during the summer and during the winters, I still recommend at least having something like this. This is a damp rid. You can find them for like two or three bucks at Walmart, uh, Walgreens, Costco, Targets, whatever. You can even find some uh, at the dollar store for a dollar. Um, I bought these online. I bought a pack of two online for like eight bucks, I think right now with Target. Um, and they last a good while and they help soak up uh, the moisture in the room, okay? But going through damp rids like this, because they are disposable, you throw them away. You know, I probably keep it in here for, for about a month. Uh, before I have to throw it away because it gets filled with water. It's going to get costly buying those over and over again. My my biggest recommendation for heat and humidity. Well, heat, obviously heat. You uh, If you can store your books in a room with central cooling, number one, do that. But if that's not an option, uh, I definitely recommend doing whatever you can do to keep the actual temperature down. We're not talking about humidity. We're talking about temperature. And like I said, I have a plug-in LG unit. It costs about, I believe, 200 bucks. Um, and I've had it for, what, like four years now? And it, it does a, a really good job. Sometimes it's hard to keep up on 100 degree days, but it does a really good job. It's not too bad on our PG&E bill, on our energy bill. But when it comes to humidity, outside of the damp rids, 
I absolutely suggest you guys investing in a dehumidifier, okay? This guy right here cost about $60, $60, $65. You don't need a big one, okay? My room is, is a little, un, it's about 225 square feet. This covers up to about 250 square feet, and that's all you need to worry about. Um, and it's a plug-in unit. You turn it on, it does fill up with water, and it's really easy. You don't have to worry about it really spilling. You can keep this in a room with your comic books and not worry about uh, water getting anywhere and damaging your books as long as you're not picking up and like tripping with it and it flying, you know, but it has a little tray right here that the water goes into and it goes into a little tiny hole. So even when you take it out, water can't get all over the place, right? You clean it, you put it back in and you just let this run. Now I let it run for a good few hours a day during the summer and it works wonders. And uh, this will last you long term. So when you think about it, if you're paying anywhere from a couple to a few dollars for damp rids and changing them out, paying $60 for something like this, definitely, definitely worth it. So, whew, all right. Those are the questions that I'm going to answer today, guys. Uh, uh, a big part of, before I wrap this video up, a big part uh, protecting your comics too is bags and boards. I've done multiple videos about bags and boards. You guys can go check them out if you haven't watched them yet. I will do another one answer, answering some more specific questions about bags and boards in the near future here, kind of as a part two to this. Before I go though, I do want to say this. I, and I've said this before, you can, it does, bags and boards don't matter if you aren't taking the, the necessary precautions in terms of environment. And that means everything that we talked about here, UV, UV rays, sunlight, uh, heat, and humidity. If you aren't mitigating those issues first and foremost, it doesn't matter if your books are without bags or in bags or whatever, you are, uh, you, you are going to welcome some sort of uh, environmental damage to your books to some extent, okay? So that's my... Uh, kind of word of advice, but don't let that undermine the fact that bagging and boarding is one of the biggest key elements to comic collecting for many reasons. It's something that I love to talk about. And like I said, I'll be talking about it uh, very soon in a, in a video in the near future. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any more uh, questions for me, please leave it in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them in the comments or even make another video, answer some more questions. Thank you guys so much. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Until next time.